So for instance, if someone's hitting to the right with a push, going to D tends to make the ball fly similar but not push as much. Welcome to Golf Trekking, the essential podcast for the passionate golfer. I'm Ashley Husing, and I'll be your host as we explore the most innovative programs, facilities, and professionals shaping the future of golf. Hi guys, Ashley here. I am so excited because it is January, which means new golf product. I am here at Ely Callaway Performance Center with my favorite hitter, Garrett Pod. Oh, thank you for saying that. It's good to be here with you too. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. This is the third time we fit together, or you fit me for clubs. So I'm pretty sure you've got me dialed in and already know what you're going to fit me in. But we had a great time on the range trying all the new product. Um, so I've got just a couple follow-up questions for you. Sure. Um, so how long have you been a fitter with Callaway? And where did you get your start in club fitting? I got my start in club fitting at Callaway, actually. And I'm going on 14 years here now. Okay. I started in our sales organization. Uh, so fitting consumers. Um, I did a, uh, was part of a program that very much like you, we cruised around in, in a, uh, a big truck. Um, and in our case, it was full of golf clubs and we'd show up at country clubs and we'd, we'd fit members that signed up to go through a fitting and we called it the tour fit van experience. Okay. And the thing that made it the, the tour fit van was we had inventory with us on site to where we could fit someone on the range, build their clubs, and then their clubs are, are sitting there at the end of the day. For them to use wow. uh, that day or the next day, wow! Uh, which was pretty fun, and um, yeah. got to see a lot of the country doing that. Got to learn a lot about fitting, and and uh, kind of gave me my start on how to, as a fitter, learn how to interact with different people in different ways. Which I think is an important skill for a fitter to learn yes. is to understand who who they're interacting with and and um, quickly uh, figure out what's going to make them have a good time because ultimately someone wants to go through a fitting and enjoy the experience um, more than anything else. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We talked a little bit about that out on the range. Yeah. I mean, maximizing the distance, the trajectory, but also their time. They're fu they want to have fun out there. They want to enjoy talking about you know, spin rate, or they want to talk about their kids while they're hitting balls, and you're putting just a great club in their hands, so. Yep, yep. Uh, knowing what, you know, makes that hour and a half or two hours really fun for someone is really important, and it's not always the same. Yeah. Um, and it's not, not necessarily tied to ability. The tour player that, you know, won a major last year doesn't necessarily want to get more technical than the 22 handicapper that took up golf last year. Yeah. So you have to... Get information from them and, uh, in a way that helps you understand how they're how they're going to have fun. Absolutely. Uh, I know club fitting is kind of sold under the guise of uh, like you do it to optimize your performance, which is true. But really, it's it's just it's a it's a uh, it's a service industry, and people go there for a good experience, just like going to a, a restaurant. You know, you're there for a meal, but you're there for an experience in some cases. So, absolutely, uh, knowing what makes that experience better is will make anyone that does club fitting a better fitter. We have been fitting together now for three years. <laughs> yeah, we went through a few options. Um, you had a driver last year that was working really great for you, and um, one of the nice things about going to the same fitter, like you mentioned, it's your third time th through here, mm -hmm. you can kind of build up a history. Uh, and shorten the conversation as to why you need what you need if you keep going back to the same person and kind of build a rapport that way and, and, and a history together. Uh, we know from the past that your tendency is you uh, kind of swing a little into out and hit up on the golf ball. If you're not going to hit it perfect, you're going to hit a little low on the club face. Right. So we know we want to try and fit a driver around um, that as a tendency for your misses, which is, which is really important to have not just your good shots flying good, but if a player has um, a, a trend on impact location that's not in the middle, to suit that impact location or fit around that impact location as well. And for you, that means having a uh, either a really stable driver mm -hmm. so that it won't twist downward okay. on the low on the face impact, or a driver that's got a really low center of gravity driver. For you, you wouldn't even notice that because... You don't hit it heel and toe very often. You just hit a little low, and that driver uh, excels at, at 
uh, giving a really good missive for that. Well, you did a great job. So I think I'm going to just be pumping them right down the middle of the fairway. <laughs> you know, they saw what they're seeing here, and, and um, the, uh, I will say this to, to your viewers, the driving range or the testing environment is, is the starting place. Not, it's not always the finish line as far as getting your clubs completely dialed in. Um, there's definitely uh, some on-course tr on trial uh, or confirmation, if you will, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's it's just that it's confirmation, and it works just like you hit it on on the driving range. Other times, maybe you don't turn it over as easy on the course, or you turn it over too much. You have to look out for some things that maybe would lead you to uh, needing to adjust the club a couple of times. Right. I know, um, just myself, I get a new driver every year, which is a perk of working here and test, testing new stuff out all the time. I'll often play with a club two to three, sometimes four rounds, tweak it each time before I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm set for as long as I have this club. Absolutely. Uh, but, but what we saw from you on the driving range today, it looks like you're going to hit a lot of uh, fairways. You can hit a lot of drives that carry and roll a little more than your old ones. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see similar benefits to your old driver on, on a miss hit in terms of maintaining a good trajectory uh, launch and spin wise. Perfect. Thank you. I'm very excited. And, you know, good. to your point, when you're saying you're playing a few rounds and then you're tweaking your club, you know, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity for you to walk through and explain to all the viewers kind of how the settings work. And uh, we have a great video for you. So let's take a look. We are seeing that a lot of people and, and a lot of golfers are becoming more educated in, you know, changing the, what is it, components? The, yeah. The settings, um, changing the settings in their, their clubs. They're getting more educated. As far as the Callaway um, configuration on, on drivers, fairway woods, and if they uh, are adjustable hybrids, they all kind of work the same. So there's a two cog system that uh, rotate around the, the tip of the shaft. And depending on how you orient those and insert it in the driver, you're going to get different, different settings. Um, as you change the hosel settings on the driver, only the cogs rotate. Um, the shaft itself does not. So you always want to look for the settings that you're after and put them in between the line on the head right here and the line on the shaft right there. So you don't want to twist everything like that to change your setting. You want to rotate the cogs and then put it back on you were going to take a nine degree driver like i've got here with the epic max ls and play it at nine degrees you'd be looking for the s on the hosel which is the stated loft setting or uh, some people would refer to that as the standard loft setting that the client that the driver starts with okay so you could put it in stated loft and neutral lie angle or you could put it in stated loft and draw lie angle so you've got two lie angles at a given loft setting. So the draw lie angle is a more upright lie angle, so it would be that way. The neutral lie angle is a flatter lie angle, so it'll sit that way. And some players will have a preference for a lie angle based on the visual. So it's almost a three degree change in lie from the N to the D. Okay. From a functionality standpoint, as the D would indicate, uh, being the more upright lie angle, it has a little more of a draw bias uh, on that setting and um, I find that the draw or the in lie angle as far as adjusting ball flight have a, have a little more influence on the starting direction of the shot so for instance if someone's hitting to the right with a push going to D tends to make the ball fly similar but not push as much okay. um, or if they're hitting a pull with the D if they flip it around to the in they'll hit a similar shaped shot but not pull it as much for those that want to adjust the driver head itself on on the models that have a, a perimeter sliding weight that's uh, going to have a little more influence on the curvature of the shot okay so if someone's slicing it um start sliding the weight here maybe before you start adjusting the the hosel here okay good to know well, uh, lie angle on the hosel start line perimeter weight on the driver curvature so you can change the loft up one degree you can change the loft up two degrees so you'd have it at a 10 degree or an 11 degree in that case and in both settings you could go upright you could go flat just like we talked about 
Okay. Um, and you can also go down one degree. So one other thing that's uh, maybe good to note, um, as you go down in loft or up in loft, the face angle starts to change. Uh, and that's just the nature of the geometry of the way the, the, um, the hosel works. Down in loft, the face will sit a little bit more open. Up in loft, the face will sit a little bit more closed. So. Okay. And then once the, the wrench clicks, you're, you're good to go. All right. Well, thank you very much. So that was such an incredible video. Thank you very much for showing us all the details. Um, but if you were to just explain quickly what every um, letter on there or number on there was, what would you, uh, how would you explain that to? Yeah, so you've got a, uh, uh, a loft adjustment, uh, which can go in four different settings. So you've got a driver, use a, an example here, there's a 12 degree driver. So you can get a 10 and a half of the same driver or nine degree of the same driver and all of them will adjust in the same way. You can go down one degree from what the head says. So this driver could play as an 11. You can go at the, the stated loft, that's the S setting. So stated loft setting, you can go plus one to 13. You can go plus two to 14. In each one of those settings, you can play that loft at a flatter lie angle, which we would uh, have an in for a neutral shot shape or a neutral start line or a neutral lie angle, however you want to think of that, that's what the N is, flatter lie angle. And okay. then there's a D, um, which is a more upright lie angle, and it's almost a three degree change in the lie angle, so the head would be more like that. For some players, that's a, a preference on, on look. Uh, they don't like the head to sit too flat or they don't like the head to sit too upright, so you can sort of uh, achieve an aesthetic preference. Um, more, more than that, it has an influence on the shot shape. So the, the D as uh, draw or D might um, uh, indicate that's a more draw bias lie angle, being more upright. And rather than put upright on there, it helps the folks out there that are adjusting their own club with no fitter or haven't adjusted right. one of our clubs before to know, okay, draw, I'm slicing it. That's the setting I, I want. Whereas if it was labeled upright, it's a little less intuitive. We would have the same impact on shot shape, but someone that's slicing the ball may not think to try that because they don't know what upright does. So right. um, we wanted our hosel adjustments to have some intuitive self um, uh, awareness to them. Of course. So in addition to having all those loft changes and the two different lie angle changes, so eight options there, it's important for anyone that's doing club fittings out there and anyone that's um, maybe trying to fit themselves into their driver a little bit better to be aware of these changes. Mm -hmm. um, as you de-loft the club face, um, the face will sit a little bit more open, and as you add loft to the club face, the face will sit a little bit more closed. So, for instance, we went through a circumstance out, with, out there with you today where a 10.5 degree driver was going too high and it was fading too much. So obviously we need to bring the, the trajectory down and we were trying to mitigate some of the fade. So taking a 10 and a half degree maybe uh, would work against what we're trying to do shot shape wise at the same time as trying to achieve what we're looking for trajectory wise because lofting it down to nine and a half makes the face sit more open, could have made it harder for you to turn the, turn the ball over, square the club face up. So we went the other direction down to a nine and if that was too low, lofting it up was a little bit better option uh, because it um, assures us that the face doesn't sit more open and make it hard for you to, to uh, square the face up. So something to be aware of as the loft angle changes, the face angle changes. You just have to know which direction the face is changing. And for some, it's a pretty noticeable visual difference. Um, usually in the two, two degree from stated, that's when it's like, oh, that sits different. Okay. Um, nowadays, they're pretty good uh, at not looking significantly different in one degree from stated. Okay. So if you go minus one, it doesn't look wide open. If you go plus one, it doesn't look super close, but okay. just something to be aware of. Okay. Wonderful. Yep. Thank you. You know, there was something that we talked about earlier today, and actually I have a clip of it, so we're going to take a look here in a moment, but really talking about not getting bogged down with the numbers. Um, you had mentioned to me before that one of your drivers that you had hit two years ago or last year was a nine degree and you now were hitting a 10 and a half and I was hitting a nine before, but, and I was stuck 
I was that person too, saying I wanted a nine degree. And it was really about getting out there and finding what was working best with my swing. And so not getting bogged down with the numbers was really, really important um, aspect for us today. So can you touch on that a little bit of, of what you found over your years of fitting and, and kind of how, how people come in either wanting to know the numbers, not, or... Yeah, from, from the standpoint of um, the numbers on the clubs, um, that's not as important as the output or the numbers on the result of the shot, uh, meaning like the, the ball speed, the trajectory, the distance, etc., um, so, for instance, if someone's using a nine-degree club and they say, give me the nine-degree driver this year, yeah, it's maybe a good place to start, but it doesn't mean you have to have a nine-degree. Some not, not all nine degrees perform the same as other nine degrees. Um, and another number we see players get caught up on is the number three, three woods. Everyone's looking to achieve the same goal as what they uh, – think a three wood to be, which is the longest hitting club off of the fairway, for the most part anyway. Um, but not everyone gets that with a three wood. So um, people should look at fairway woods a little bit the way they look at drivers, which is I need the loft that helps me hit the ball the farthest. That could be a 12, that could be an eight. Um, but the goal is the same, to hit the trajectory that's the most efficient for, for distance and uh, then you'd maybe circle some accuracy in, uh, around that conversation too. Uh, but three woods or fairway woods, if, if you're looking for that, figure out what loft or what model produces the best distance for you for that shot. Could be a, uh, a four wood, could be a five wood. And um, I don't know, maybe someday fairway woods will have just lofts on them, the same as drivers. Drivers don't have a one on them anymore. Um, but you want to uh, focus on what produces what your goal might be rather than I need a three wood that goes farther. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I mean, that was really helpful for me today to put me in the headspace that I needed to just let you put clubs in my hand and see what worked best for us today. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it's not a uh, bad approach to if, uh, if someone's handing you a club to try to just hit it and then ask questions <laughs> after. Yes. Rather than uh, some some, uh, some players can kind of talk themselves into liking a club or not liking a club if they know too much about it. Where if they're really results oriented, kind of let the results happen and then kind of try and talk about why why they're seeing the results. So basically, when you're going to get fit for the first time, let's go in a little bit blind, very open minded, and just hit whatever the fitter gives you. And just see what you think from there. Yeah, it's not a bad rule of thumb. And uh, have some fun. If someone has never been fit before, they're often nervous. They feel like they're getting judged. Um, the fitter is there to help you out and have you, and, and help you have fun yeah. with the game of golf. So kind of go in with, with the mindset of no matter how weird you think your game or your swing is, you're probably in the in the <laughs> – uh, the norm rather than, right. than the outlier right. that way it's we've seen it all and um, we're here to we're here to help help you yeah. so don't feel don't feel nervous or um, that you you don't deserve to get fit I, I think amateurs uh, at the higher handicap level have the probably the most to gain from getting fit um, which is probably maybe the opposite perception that amateurs have of fitting they think it's only for the elite players or the better players right which i think i think the opposite is true absolutely that was actually going to be my next question so that's oh, really? perfect <laughs> i was actually just going to ask you who do you think would benefit the most from getting fit for clubs yeah yeah like i said uh the higher handicappers have the most to learn because they tend to be the newest at the game so they can learn a lot about the technology, uh, a lot about their swing. A lot of uh, higher handicappers haven't taken lessons yet, so maybe they don't know why they hit it uh, out on the toe. Um, a lot of the times during fitting, they'll learn some of those things about their swing, and they can take that information to an instructor. And some fitters sort of walk this gray line between fitting and instruction. Right. And a really good fitter will kind of know when someone needs wants them to get involved with their swing and when to stay away from it. Um, that's another good trait of a, of a fitter. You can go down a rabbit hole trying to talk about 
their swing the whole time, and then all of a sudden, two two hours later, you forgot to tell them what what club to try. <laughs> um, uh, I can imagine you would do that. I try not to. <laughs> I'm not the best instructor. I know a little, uh, maybe just enough to be dangerous, uh, or just enough to to help someone that's struggling. But I I really try to focus on um, what what I know about their swing and how that relates to what clubs will work with their swing. And um, I do like to know, as far as the people that are wanting to change their swing, how far along in that process are they? How committed to that process are they? And then use some intuition to try and assess if they've got the ability to get to where they want to go. Right. Because um, that can sometimes lead to recommending products that they kind of got to grow into right. to, to really in, enjoy them. And um, again, that, that really boils down to trying to listen to uh, the person that's getting fit and understand what's going to make them have fun, not just today, but what's going to make them have fun with their clubs that they get six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, however long they have that set. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. I feel like we've gotten... A ton of great info from you today. We spent two, three hours on the range today. I got to try a bunch of new clubs. Uh, well, thank you very much for your time today. I really enjoyed spending the day with you, being Likewise. here uh, at this performance center. It was just incredible. The Eli, Eli. There you go. The, <laughs> that's actually a thing. I pronounced it wrong three times. So the Ely Callaway yep. Performance Center. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe next time we'll get in here and do some putting, uh, but. You know, until next time, we'll go round four of fitting probably next year. Uh, so beautiful. Thank you very much for being here. If there's anything that you'd like to say to the viewers about fitting, um, any last notes about Callaway, please do so. If you have the mic, the floor. <laughs> oh gosh, I think we covered everything uh, about about fitting. Um, I'll say it's been an honor to work here for 14 years at Callaway. Um, we've got a great culture here and uh, a, a lot of innovative. Uh, people here uh, all working to the same goal and it's a pleasure pleasure to be here Absolutely. and I mean that from the heart oh I love that that's that's one of the reasons why I love being a staffer as well because Cal the culture here at Callaway is so inclusive and it's so welcoming and warm and everyone just wants to have a great day play golf help up others become better golfers and it's truly it's just an incredible culture and incredible place to be so thank you you got it and um, we will see you next time. All right. Until then, safe travels. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. All right. So coming up next, we're going to head out to the RV for a little RV tip. So stay tuned. Yes. All right. Nailed it.